To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today. Or call us at 276-889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk and Enroll in Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk and Roll in Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Tractor USA, the best way to buy and sell premium ag and construction equipment. Tractor USA was designed to be straightforward, simple, and affordable with zero commission and live auctions every week. Tractor USA auctions offer the finest selection of pre-owned tractors, combines, and other ag and construction equipment from across the United States and the world. Simply go to TractorUSA.com to get started today. One of America's newest racetracks in the country here tonight. Saturday Night Racing League is set to go live for 180 laps here at Iowa Speedway. Modeled after Richmond Raceway, Rusty Wallace had a big part in this track's design, but in 2006, they broke ground to put this place together. It's put on a variety of hybrid style racing. I am your host, Bradley Cooper, alongside me in the booth tonight. Alex Gagnon, my co-commentator for SNR, and Alex, the hybrid racing I mentioned, kind of similar to Richmond, but that at times it kind of mimics what you see at Chicagoland or Kentucky, where the track's a little bit bigger, they get higher speed. Yeah, it's around the same size as Richmond, but there's a lot more banking here at Iowa than you would see at a Richmond. You can generate a lot more speed off the corners, and it's really become a really unique bull ring that a lot of series will travel through here. Um, just south of a mile, but decent banking. You can see 14 degrees in the turns, 10 down the straightaways. And um, you never really have a second to think here because while it's a little bit bigger than a Bristol or a Martinsville and the straightaways are a bit longer, the speeds are definitely higher. So you're constantly getting into these corners and there's not really a spot to let up. Speaking of last week, this is actually going to fit in the wheelhouse of last week's winner, Joshua Banks, who got the victory. Moved himself up another couple positions in the points, looking at a top five here coming into today. Jeff Wright, your points leader by eight points over Joseph McWhorter, who finished runner up. And it's been tight. Alex Bell also on the podium. So we've had a variety of guys really stepping it up at the end of the season. Jeff Wright, it's going to be tight going into the chase. Yeah, this, those last couple spots so close between Casey Lakaitos. Uh, Bailey Turner and Chuck Sweeting there. A lot of, not a whole lot of points separating those 11 through 14 spots. And as we bring up your race analysis, 180 laps, 45 mile an hour pit road speed limit. Very tough pit road to get on and off of, especially on the entrance. It's almost right at the exit of turn four, so drivers will have to be extra careful. That jettison there on the access road makes it rather difficult to miss that pit wall barrier in the Tell you what, if, don't be surprised to see someone hit that tonight trying to come in under green flag stops. Three green-white checkered attempts, and we'll have 85% fuel. Of course, 
the iRacing fix setup are actually not modified this week. Last week at uh, Milwaukee, we were modified. This week, we are not. But let's uh, dial this in here and get you trackside. Saturday Night Racing League is set to grid now. Starting on the pole here tonight with a 23588, it's Jeff Wright in the number 48 machine. Seth Hatchell is going to start outside the front row. Row number two belongs to Ben Bafford with Alex Bell in the fourth spot. Fifth goes to Bailey Turner, Joshua Banks in sixth, seventh, Joseph McWhorter, Caleb Weekly in eighth, and rounding out the top ten here today, it's going to be Casey Licatis and Chuck Sweeting. Yeah, back in row six here, you've got Lucas Lyons in the 11, Gary Bergeron in the one. In 13th, it's Chad Klinger alongside Ryan Rose in 14th. 15th tonight, Philip Brewer alongside Ree Massey. Back there in row nine, it is Noah Mikowski alongside Ryan Carwile. And in row 10, the 63 of Max Cost alongside the 43 of Bryce Shoemaker. Said it like that for years. It's Mahalski, and we'll we'll make sure that we get it right. He always gets upset at me <laughs> for all the years <laughs> I've been calling him Mikowski. Uh, Austin Belke is going to start in 21st and rounding out the field of 22 cars here today. It's going to be Stefan Davis in the number 66 machine. Going to make a quick edit to my notes here to make sure I got it right the next time around. Yeah, it's an easy mistake. I did it for a solid uh, two seasons at BTDY and a, a full season here at SNR before I was informed that I was saying it wrong. I said, hey, that commentary thing, you're doing it wrong. Do better. <laughs> It's always a deflating feeling, especially after so long. It's like, ah, this is going well, and someone comes back to the the last year you've messed this up and you just go, well, that's yeah. a humbling moment. <laughs> yes. Always good to get a reminder, though, of where you came from and where you've been. How about this? No where we've how been? How long is... you've been doing it? Yeah, it's always going to sneak up on you at some point in time. Well, talk about how long we've been doing it. Two seasons. We're halfway through. We're almost at the end of regular season two for Saturday Night Racing League. Next week, the season finale, before we reset everything and put these guys in the top 12 and a level keel, but the pace car is gonna pull off. Jeff Wright's gonna lead him into turn one, and Saturday Night Racing League is live from Iowa. I don't know if this is gonna work, Alex. Getting real dicey already up front here. He's taking control on there in turn two. We're going to keep it settled in for now. We're still three wide and three and four. Action up front already getting hot and heavy on the open line. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that kind of start to an Iowa race where guys are taking the outside line in one. You saw the eight machine of Seth Hatchell struggle. And that line up high, a lot of bumps. It's really easy for the front splitter to drag the racetrack and shoot you to the outside wall. Yeah, and I guess the one thing he's got going for him here is because it's the opening lap, there hasn't been a ton of time for a lot of marbles to get kicked up into that outer groove. Uh, if this happens though later in the race, I could really see some handling issues up there with all the, uh, the rubber that'll get kicked up higher on the track as the lower way around Iowa tends to be the fastest way here. Bailey Turner is going to peak three wide, gets the nose in there for just a millisecond. Ben Bafford, introduction here to the Saturday Night Racing League. First time we've saw that. And I tell you what, I'm not the first time I've said that name, but the first time I've seen it here in an SNR race, and he's definitely one to look out for. A little out of the ordinary, though. Blank 66 machine, usually under a different number. Bafford falls back to fourth. Joseph McWhorter gets by for third. Yeah, a lot of positions here in the top 10 getting traded early. Saw on the backstretch a second ago. Alex Bell threw a huge block down the backstretch here. You get a mirror full of them now on board with uh, Bafford. Um, you got the eight here of Hatchell to the outside of Bell through three and four side by side, and it goes too wide a couple rows deep back here behind the 14 or 66 on screen. That's Caleb Weekly, the 13th, starting to make some moves. He's lost two positions to start this race. 
However, some drivers, a little different approach to Iowa. They like to save really early and then start picking those spots back up. You just want to mitigate how many spots you lose at the beginning of the race. It can quickly go, you know, four or five positions if you get stuck on that outside. And you're seeing that with Seth Hatchel. He started this race outside the pole. He's lost four spots already. Yeah, and he's certainly in danger of losing more because not only is the 15 of Bell about to go by, he's about to have last week's winner, Josh Banks, to the inside as well. And he's got the 50 of Lucados around his back bumper as well. So he is not out of the situation yet. Uh, and he cannot get down to the inside here. 35 closes the gap in just enough, so the 8 hangs out to the outside. And he'll remain on the outside of the 15 here. He's getting good runs off the corner to at least keep him in the hunt, but I don't think this is going to be sustainable over a longer run. Another name you're probably familiar with out here on the racetrack, Lucas Lyons. Till little touch with the wall there. SCT Chevrolet gets a little brush. But, you know, Lakatis, Bell, Banks, and Hatchell. They can't escape each other right now, and it seems like that outside is just not working. Yeah, they're really starting to all kind of get marred up here, and uh, you can start to see the gap forming between our top three and then jumping back to Baffert and fourth. The, uh, the top three here of Wright, Turner, and McWhorter, they're all kind of pulling away from this lead group about half a second here, uh, which is not impossible to make up, but in the early going, the last thing you want to do is see the leaders immediately start running away at a track that isn't very large. You see the 73 now making a dive to the inside of Turner trying to take that second Oh, position. contact. Oh, he made a touch contact. on him. Got it a little bit too soon to the throttle, and Turner pinched him down there in the middle of the apex. However, McWhorter running the outside here in three and four, he got that big run because of that. Just can't really go anywhere with it through the entrance of one and two. It's kind of a single line racetrack on this side. Yeah, and the one thing you mentioned there was uh, he got back to the throttle a little bit too early, and that's what led to the contact between the two cars. A track of this size is so easy to get on the throttle a little bit too quickly. You know, you want to maximize your time on the throttle here because you spend so much of it turning. Uh, and it's so easy, especially when you're battling for position. You just get a little over anxious. You get a little too much throttle down before the car is fully pointed forward and uh, can start pushing you up the track, which is exactly what we saw there with the 24 and the 73. 35 of Josh Banks trying to look to the inside of Seth Hatchell for the seventh position. Eight car still struggling here, down five, and at threat to lose another one. There's quite a few yeah, drivers in here. McWhorter trying to do it again on the outside. Yeah, he's going to try a different strategy here. The inside didn't work about two, three laps ago, but he's going to maybe be able to get it done here on the outside. He's got a nose ahead of the 24 right now. Will he be able to clear him off of four? Looks like he will. The quarter now up into second, trying to chase down Jeff Wright. The momentum that the 73 has been carrying here. He knows that wind's just right around the corner, but it's been tough for him, and I have to say that Overall, he's one of the guys to look out for. Jeff Wright, of course, leading this race so far from lap number one. He hasn't really had to contend with any of this traffic. And, I mean, and no offense to Jeff, but typically when you start to get him in traffic, that's when he starts to suffer handling-wise. Yeah, especially, I mean, these cars, the moment you hit dirty air, it's a completely different handling race car than when you're out in clean air. And when you spend so much time out front like the 48 does, uh, you don't get necessarily the same amount of reps that the rest of the field can get there working their way through traffic, which is something that a couple of the cars behind him here might have to their advantage if the 48 gets shuffled out of the lead here. You know, McWhorter does have his one win this season so far at Bristol. He would love to cap off a second one here uh, at Iowa. He's just got to get around the guy who's got the most wins this season. So easier said than done for the 73 right now as he goes way up the track in three and four. So I stay corrected on that. McWhorter does have a win this season. Jeff Wright, of course, with four wins. Joshua Banks with three. So there's two multi-time winners. And then the rest of the field has just kind of been picking up the table scraps. A single win for McWhorter, a single win for uh, Reggie Ortega, all the way back to the beginning of the season at Daytona. And you have Bailey Turner, who has ran a limited schedule, but he's been really hot as of late, led a lot of laps, just hasn't been able to get that second one. Ray Massey, if you can think back to the race where I believe it was Jacob Bradley and McWhorter going at it for that second win and the first win yeah. 
Yeah, just a huge crash off a of turn four. Ray Massey was there to capitalize on the mistake. 30th the first that race for Massey. Just an unbelievable yeah. drive to the front. The top three really spread out here. Gaysa Lakatis is able to work his way into fourth. Lucas Lyons just behind him. This field's kind of went dormant. They've quieted down quite considerably here on lap 19. Yeah, I think you've reached this part in the run where the track position that could have been gained or lost on the start has kind of by and large been passed up. And now it's a matter of making sure you save your stuff for a longer run here. There wasn't any wrecks in the early going. Looks like all indications that we'll get a nice green flag run here. As you see uh, Baffert diving to the inside, gets right around Lyons. Got to look oh. to the inside of the 50 as well, leaning on him. 50 gets shoved up the track, and here goes Baffert on the inside. Lyons trying to follow him through, but I don't think Lucas is done there yet. He's going to go right back to the outside here, trying to rally his way back into that fourth position. Okay, so Lakata said pretty much eight tires going through turn one. Heavy, heavy contact there between him and Baffert, but Baffert able to work his way up into fourth spot, top five. Single file out. Still a pretty heated battle between fourth all the way back to seventh. Yeah, almost three wide for a second there as they all fanned out into the corner. They'll dial it back down the two wide here with Lions up on the high side. Going to try and roll around the 50 here in the turns one and two. This one we were saying, it seemed like things were calming down a little bit as people were going to save their stuff for the longer run. This battle immediately picked right back up. Baffert's got a whole lot of company behind him all vying for that fourth spot, but he's got a little bit of room to operate now, so he might be able to start pulling away from this group, but Lucas Lyons may maybe going to look to the inside here in one. That 11 going to go to the inside trying to pick that pass for fourth. So on the inside have been Baffert, the 11 machine not able to get around. Baffert, of course, scored as the 14 machine. You're seeing a 66 in that. I believe that is the crash claims. Uh, can't quite read what that says. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Lose this. Crash claims dot, dot US. Good old crash. <laughs> crash claims R dot US. Uh, yeah. R us. We, uh, that Toyota Supra. I mean, it's in good shape right now. Qualified top five, still running top five. Uh, better uh, he's been running so far than, say, the eight of uh, Seth Hatchell qualified in the front row, falling back to seventh. That seems to be where his skit has ended, though. Once he fell down to seventh, he kind of stabilized, and he hasn't lost a position in about the past 15 or 20 laps. So it seems like right now that's where he's going to be able to hold on for a moment. He's so, yeah, got a battle behind him here. Banks and Weekly for side-by-side. -side. Banks really drove it in deep in the three and four. He's probably going to be able to clear. No, not going to be able to clear the 13. Weekly with a really good run off the corner. That's the one thing with Iowa, you know, even with how shorter this track is on that inside line, you can keep so much more throttle time down, through, at least through three and four uh, on that outside lane. You can keep yourself in contention, but you lose a lot of that in one and two. And that's where it's a little tighter on track. Looking deeper in this field, still some more chaos. The 0 9 of Chad Klinger, the one of Jerry Bergeron going at it. No, Mahalski is up three positions. Bryce Shoemaker up five in front of them for the 14th, 15th position. These guys have not spread out really at all from about fifth position back. It's just right on top of each other. Somebody makes a mistake here. You can easily see two or three cars involved. Yeah, and if someone makes a big mistake, there goes the rest of the field behind them. Iowa, not a particularly wide track. Uh, not the easiest to get out of the way should something go wrong as uh, 35 of Banks here starting to make his move toward the front. Got around weekly, looking to get around Hatchell and the 50 of Lakatos here. He might be able to get the job done as they almost go three wide through three and four. The 35 now to the inside of the 50. We're going to close off the eight of Hatchell who got a good run but has absolutely nowhere to go with it. And he's just going to try and shove the 50 in the turn one and two. Trying to do something Weekly with that run. Hit the 13 wall there. all the way up there. He seems to be having some handling trouble. He feels like he's way up toward the wall each of the past couple laps. Yeah, Weekly definitely having a struggle here later in this run. We're about halfway through the fuel run. 35 of Banks still trying to clear the 50 of Lakatis. This is for the seventh position, sixth position rather. He will get by and 
finally now able to set his sights. That is the 11 of Lucas Lines in front. That would be the next car. 35 coming off of a great week last week at Milwaukee. You know he wants to carry that momentum here. And like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, this fits his wheelhouse. I mean, he had a good time at Richmond, got the win there, got a good finish at Bristol, I believe another win. So it's the short tracks, and this kind of fits in that style. Yeah, I've got him marked as winning that Richmond, Milwaukee, and Gateway. Ah, Gateway. Gateway, not a huge track, but somehow still the largest track he's won on this season. So anything a uh, mile and a quarter or less seems to be really where the 35 thrives. Iowa very much fits that description, and we've seen him uh, methodically start to pick off cars in the past couple laps. Would not be surprised if in a few laps here he gets to the back bumper of Lions. The 11's running five, but that 35 seems absolutely dialed in right now compared to a lot of those cars in the top 10. He is the fastest car on the racetrack with the exception of Ben Bafford pretty much matching his lap time. Everybody else is in the 25s. Bafford just put down a 24.8, so he is actually faster than your leaders right now. It's just a matter if he can keep that keep that pace going. Bailey Turner's starting to fall off. He is about a, a full second behind Joseph McWhorter, who's half a second running an entirely different line than the 48 of Jeff Wright. Yeah, the 73's done a good job keeping the 48 within arm's reach here. Hasn't necessarily had the speed to get up to his back bumper, but he's using the exit of three and four really well, gaining a lot of time on that front stretch and is kind of keeping him within that half second range. The only car who's really been able to keep pace with the 48 through the opening 34 laps here as they make their way to the line for lap 35. I mean, it's these two and then a full second back to Bailey Turner, like you mentioned. And it's another second back from Bailey Turner back to anyone else in the field. So right now, this field is a little spread out from the top couple cars. And then once you look behind them, it's a giant cluster of cars. I mean, everyone's running on top of each other a little farther back in the field here, as you can see on the onboard. On board with Noah Mahalski, this is for 14th position. Bryce Shoemaker up on the outside. And a little check up there on the throttle. Looked like Mahalski couldn't get back to it. He's not going to get the drive off. He'll lose a position to Chad Klinger. And maybe another one to Ray Massey. Going to try and get that sorted out there. Running a little deeper into the field here is Mahalski. He's got a lot of cars to try and work through, but the, uh, the thing that's probably a little reassuring for all these cars is that how close they're all running. There's a ton of positions and a ton of points all in this little cluster of cars here. So if you can get your car rolling the right way, there's a lot of cars and a lot of opportunities to try and make your way up through the field. Because, I mean, the distance between 17th and about 5th right now is only 2 seconds, and that's the gap between 4th and the leader, so very different story deeper into the field than it is up front at the moment. Lucas Lyons, Joshua Banks starting to merge together a little bit closer each lap. Banks peaks down to the bottom on the exit of turn two. He's going to be right pretty much at the bumper and now they go into turn three. He's got the nose on the inside. The 11 starting to fall off here towards the end of this run. About 10 laps left I'd say before you start seeing green flag pit stops. The 35 has done a really good job so far managing his tires and making sure that he's got the pace he needs deeper into the run. He's been able to execute on that. If you look a little farther on back, the 13 of Weekly has a ton of cars all kind of stacked up behind him right now. The 50's back there, the 75 is sweeting. I mean, there, there's action all over the track right now. It's hard to figure out exactly who yeah. to watch because there's like four different battles happening all at once. Almost some three wide there with Sweeting. The looks like Lakatus and everybody getting really close to that exit wall in turn two. We'll peek back up here. The 35 has gotten clear of Lucas and Lyons. He's going to try to go chase down Ben Bafford in the fourth position. Second through fourth, starting to accordion back together. A big gap here to Jeff Wright. He's led every single lap thus far of the 40 completed and doesn't look like anyone's going to break that streak before the green green flag pit stops. 
Yeah, McWhorter had the best chance of anybody, but he's really fallen off over the past couple laps here. Lost about a half a second and has fallen right back into the clutches of Bailey Turner and then Baffert just behind them. So could be a bit of a shuffle inside these podium positions here as of those three, the guy in fourth is the one running the fastest right now in Baffert. And then Banks also really running well at the moment. So fourth and fifth, two of the fastest cars on track right now. We'll see if, uh, I don't think Banks will have the time to catch these guys before the pit cycle, but Baffert certainly will, because he is right there on the back bumper of 24. Looking here through one and two, 66 machine on your screen, 14 scored on iRacing. About a tenth faster the time before, and then they match lap times. That, that dirty error at this point, I think, is hindering anyone really you can get that run you can catch this guy but once you get into that wake there's just enough dirty air on the entries and exits oh what a dive there by the 66 he's gonna try to get the nose in there not gonna work this time around but he sent it down in there alex and you can also see a little bit of right side damage there for bafford from that earlier contact uh, I'm trying to remember back with who he collided with around Lewis last 15 Lacatus. or so when he moved. Uh, it was the 50. Yeah, he moved the 50 up and out of the way. And that damage very visible along the right side of the car. So not, not, I can't imagine it would really be affecting the handling of the car too much. But it's definitely something to keep an eye on. If that car starts freeing up and he ends up flipping the wall at some point. You know, light repeated hits to the outside of the car really start to add up. So he's definitely going to be managing that knowing there's already probably a little bit of damage there. And look so at this. Saw, My God. We saw a surge from this car just a minute ago. He'd worked his way up to almost ninth oh. and a little loose moment there for Rose. But we saw the 13 of Weekly had worked his way up, and they're three wide again here through one and two. If I'm the 75 of Sweeting, I want to be anywhere except where I was. Three by three. He was the middle dot of that grid. Bound his way to the bottom of the track. Now the 23 of Massey finds himself in the middle of all this. He's going to be side by side with the 43 there coming off the corner of Shoemaker. I mean, there there is a lot of cars all fighting for position here, and it'll be tough to try and do any sort of green flag pit stops if they're all running this close because you have to fight your way down to the bottom of the track. It's like a super speedway track out here, but less than a mile. Look at that. I mean, they're just continuing to go three wide here. Weekly, and there's Whoa. the 03 of Mahalski. Gets into the outside wall from that checkup. Weekly kind of ran the 78 up the track. I mean, right now, if you're 10th on back, I think I'd just bring it down early at this point. You're losing so much ground. If you're the 13 of Weekly, it might be time. Yeah, the tough part is, though, with Carr still on his back bumper, might be a little easier said than done. He's trying to get that low side to work. He's got the 71 of Carwile right on his back bumper here, who might look to the inside, force him into the middle of a three wide here in the one. Definitely not where the 13 wants to be, but the 75 way up the track. He'll get the run off the corner he needs. He'll get around the 13. Right now, he is just going the wrong direction in a hurry, is uh, the 13 of Caleb Weekly. Meanwhile, back up front, second, third, and fourth have all found each other. Right on top of each other, and Jeff Wright loving what he sees. He's probably not even seeing it anymore. He's just checked out 2.6 seconds. These guys all within a tenth of each other in their three-way battle up here in the top five. Side-by-side side coming out of four. The 24 of Bailey Turner had almost completed the pass on Joseph McWhorter. Now he has Ben Bafford on the inside. So a pass gone wrong here for the 24 machine puts him in a bad spot. Yeah, right as, uh, right as the 24 couldn't complete that pass, Bafford made him pay for it, trying to jump the advantage. Now three wide for a second. The 73 coming down pit road. I think the pit cycle's beginning here from second place with Joseph Porter. So McWhorter coming down that long, flat, 45 mile per hour pit road, trying to capitalize on this situation. Let's see if he can hit the box perfectly. It's another situation to talk about, too, is the pit road actually wraps around the entrance of turn one. So if you have a pit stall from about six position forward, it's a little difficult to see your stall. Yeah, especially if you're in that third, the fifth area, because if you're first, second, you know you're right at the end. But 
just ahead of McWhorter here. I mean, you can tell you're in the middle of that curve. You just kind of have to know where you're at. Uh, so the first green flag pit cycle you might be a little uh, sketchy on where that actually is coming down. But afterwards, I'm sure they'll be fine as um, we're getting a nice uh, view of the stands there. <laughs> like uh, whoever our virtual camera op is need to re uh, refocus that lens. <laughs> little out of focus there on the back of the, the pit entry, but nonetheless, Jeff Wright still in that frame, and you could tell the silver and blue machine definitely has a massive lead, even without the focus. I, I don't think you need a, a... Well, you might need a telescope to see those guys back there. Yeah, the other part of it is, um, you know, obviously coming down under green flag conditions will cost you time. You will go at least a lap down. Uh, but even a couple of cars who haven't pit yet are starting to get into danger of uh, getting lapped. The 89, almost 17 seconds off the uh, the leader now. And in uh, a race where, you know, even at this point in time where lap times are like around 25 seconds or so, uh, you could find yourself with the, uh, the leader in your mirror sooner rather than later. So you have a couple more cars coming down pit road, the occasional car making their way on down. So not a full rush the pit road here to start this uh, green flag pit cycle, but every lap, it seems like there's another taker. There's Seth Hatchell in the number eight. It's coming down. Remember, Hatchell started outside the pole. He'd fallen all the way back to about the ninth position before he hit pit road, so tough break here, but maybe he can make some of that ground back up. And this track, such a learning curve. It's going to change so much as this race progresses. 09 at Klinger coming down. These tires that you had at the beginning of the race, four fresh ones, a cold track, now it's heated up. It's gonna be an entirely different car and fresh tires this next time around. Yeah, it absolutely is, as we see the 09 hit their box here. And the other part of it is this is 180 laps at Iowa. I mean, there's a lot of laps to run still. I mean, Jeff Wright has been in control for the opening 58 laps here, but there's still about 120 to go here, give or take a couple, so. A lot of time for this track to change, for cars to change here on fresh tires. And as these pit cycles start to devolve from each other, there will be a lot of different cars going very different speeds depending on what strategy they're on. Uh, and that's going to really throw a wrench in the plan to some of these guys because you can only plan for so much, especially if you're in charge of your own strategy and driving. And Joseph McWhorter kind of short pits the lead, and so that will probably cycle him out. Looking at the lap times, it's almost a full second and a half faster than your leader, Jeff Wright. That'll even out, though, because Jeff has stretched it now an additional seven laps from when McWhorter brought it down on this, this stint here. I'd venture to say that it probably will only take a couple laps. Jeff Wright will be back into the lead. Yeah, the big question will be when he does end up coming down pit road. Because about half the field has come down pit road to this point, but the other half is not, including Wright, Baffert, and Turner. So we're going to see, I think, a big split in strategies over the uh, the coming laps as we see more cars making their way back on the track here, trying to get up the speed. I think that was Rose. And a few more takers here. Here comes Massey down pit road. And we've mentioned it before, but if there's one guy that if you want to see how far you can stretch it on fuel, how far these things can, are capable of going, look at the 24 Bailey Turner as Jeff Wright will peel it down pit road. Pay attention to that 24 car because he is notorious for taking these runs 10, 15 laps longer than the rest of the field. He might be clutching it right now as we speak. No clutch. Well, he's in a good fight for the lead here with Banks off of four. Maybe that's why we're not hearing any clutch, and maybe that was the case. As Banks actually comes down pit road as they were side-by-side side in the corner. So the 35 worked his way up to battling for the lead, decided it was prime time to come down pit road off of four. And now there's only five cars on track who have yet to come down pit road. Bailey Turner, the leader of that group. Josh Banks, one of the last cars to bring it down here. He uh, started sixth, fell back to outside the top ten, and then slowly and methodically worked his way through the field as we see the 50 on those older tires just getting absolutely eaten up by those on the fresher tires here the 78 of rose nowhere to go lost out big time to a couple of those cars ahead of him and rose actually uh had to check up so much that you had the 03 and mahalski get around him so now it's down to four cars turner carwile davis 
There's a 66 machine of Stefan Davis and then Case of Lakatis, who we were just watching there. Now, I don't know if this is a good call to stay out this long. I mean, we're talking about a second and almost a half that these guys have fallen off. And if you look at the very best lap times of some of these guys, they're running 23s at times compared to the 25-3 that they're running now. Yeah, and that time will certainly add up over the course of time here. It looks like the 50 is coming down pit road, as has the 66. So just the 24 and the 71 yet to bring it down pit road. McWhorter has worked his way onto the lead lap again. Uh, he is ahead of the 48 of Jeff Wright. Um, that is the provisional gap, and he's got a pretty healthy lead, but, you know, right on significantly fresher tires. I'd imagine he'll close that gap to the 73 in a matter of time once the 24 and 71 come down pit road. Yeah, you're looking at about a three-second gap back from Joseph McWhorter, and Jeff Wright yet to unlap himself from Bailey Turner, but he is within striking distance. 24 car probably gonna bring it down pit road anytime. Runs the outside, so not this time around. As Austin Belke on the inside. Three wide as they come off a of turn four. Jeff Wright officially back on the lead lap. Now let's see if he can chase down the 73 McWhorter, who would be your leader after this all cycles through. Yeah, but a lot of it hinges on the fact that there isn't a freak caution that comes out here while Turner and Carwile have not come down pit road. Again, the 24 to the outside, not gonna be coming down this time around. So I think he's gonna try and stretch this thing till the fuel cells dry, maybe hope for a caution, or if not, just give himself the freshest tires on track uh, by a wide margin. But how much time did he lose on the opening stint here will really be the question. He'll gain time on the rest of the field this entire second stint, but I mean, he is hemorrhaging seconds a lap here to most of the field. There he is, trying to come down pit road. A little loose moment there. A little sideways on the entrance, but able to get it down. And that'll leave Ryan Carwile, the last car out on the racetrack. He'll stay out for a lap and get one lead. I believe he got it there. Yeah, right at the line. Carwile here going to try and move up the track. Everyone trying to get around him on these fresh tires. You see Shoemaker and uh, Massey trying to get around, sweeting as well. And here comes the 71, maybe? Nope. He's going to stay out another lap. Ensure that he's got that lap lead bonus, just in case it was up for debate. Now he's definitely got his one, but only a 10 second gap ahead or behind to McWhorter. Um, and this is, he still has the full pit cycle to go, so he's going to get shuffled way deep into the field here whenever he does eventually bring the 71 down pit road. Yeah, he'll probably cycle out somewhere around the 13th, 14th position based off the time. And you know, if you're looking at what Bailey Turner and those guys stand out as long as they did, they actually went a lap down 24 car back out on the racetrack. But look what he's got to chase down Carlisle, who hasn't hit pit road yet. He's got the leaders right behind him. That he does. So he's going to have a near full lap to uh, undo. And he'll have the freshest tires compared to these guys by a mile but he still has almost a mile of track that he has to un, uh, undo the damages of from that opening stint. So now at this point, if you are um, the 24 Bailey Turner, you're hoping for the longest green flag run you can get, give you the most time to utilize those fresh tires compared to the field. As McWhorter and Wright gonna battle for the provisional lead here, whoever takes this will inherit the lead when the 71 comes down pit road. And that's unfortunate there for McWhorter because Carwile hadn't brought it down pit road until just this moment. McWhorter needed him to get out of the way so he could get a lap lead and get that bonus point. But Jeff Wright's going to resume the lead here on lap 73. Yeah, so on the 73, despite the, uh, the short pit there, does not get the luxury of even getting uh, the lap lead bonus. Um, he'll lose out to Wright just as the 71 comes down pit road. And, on significantly fresher tires, the 48 just driving away from McWhorter at the moment. The gap already at nine tenths of a second. Stick around though, we have plenty of action left to cover here from Iowa Speedway. You're watching the Saturday Night Racing League live on V-Speed. More coverage continues right after this. Lap traffic out of the way, it's between these two. They're even for the white flag lap. This race still very undecided. 
Finally had the lift. Big run from Eduardo. This is going to be his chance. They're running out of time, and they know it. horsepower at their feet. That was a huge run for Bradley. He got back the advantage, but here comes a big diamond order. Might just try to run him out of room here. Oh, they put him in the wall. They're going to crash. They both crash. Here comes Ray Massey. Ray Massey's going to win it. To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today. Or call us at 276-889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk In and Roll In Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk In and Roll In Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Tractor USA, the best way to buy and sell premium ag and construction equipment. Tractor USA was designed to be straightforward, simple and affordable with zero commission and live auctions every week. Tractor USA auctions offer the finest selection of pre-owned tractors, combines and other ag and construction equipment from across the United States and the world. Simply go to TractorUSA.com to get started today. Back here live from Iowa Speedway, you're watching the Saturday Night Racing League live on V-Speed. They have concluded 81 laps, about to be 82 as they cross the line. 24 of Bailey Turner is working his way back through this field after pitting about eight laps later than Jeff Wright, who's led the vast majority of the laps, 69 exactly, as he comes off a of turn four, about to make it 70. Alex, I tell you what, man, this, eight, this 48 car, he looks untouchable unless we get something dramatic. Well, he looks untouchable at the moment. I am really curious to see if this 24 car can keep the pace that he's got going right now. Because he pits so late and because we're still under green, Bailey Turner is really putting together a strong run back through the field. He still has a lot of distance to cover, but he has undone a lot of ground already. Uh, and he's still continuing to chop time off from that front group. So you can see a pretty hefty gap uh, between Turner right now and the uh, the car ahead in Banks, but you can see how quickly that's coming down. And that's just on the straightaway. I mean, every lap here, he's chopping three, four tenths off that gap. So he continues to be making good time. But right now, much to your point, the 48 of Jeff Wright, I mean, led over 70 laps so far and the 85 laps complete. He's been virtually unstoppable through the opening half of this race. A little lap traffic here with the 71 of Carwile, who stayed out to lead some laps. He was the longest on that. And I'm actually surprised that Jeff Wright's hanging with him because Carwile has the freshest tires on the track right now. That he does. The other thing, though, is that he uh, wasn't running particularly great before the pit cycle began. He was running all right, but maybe it's just a matter of that car needs a little bit more time to separate from the 48. So you can see the timing tower there. Right now, a healthy two and a half. Oh, oh somewhere, car. I think, down to the inside of the backstretch. A lot of smoke there. I don't know who that was, but I have a good guess. So I'm going to back a car this car coming down pit road. Dry 
riding with the 43 of Bryce Shoemaker. Let's see what happens here on the back straightaway. Contact between him and the 11. Down off the racing surface. Heavy front end damage. That will not bring out a caution, but it is enough to pop the engine on this machine, and he's going to have to get probably a good 20 minutes of repair. Yeah, his day effectively is probably over here. He's been running pretty well. He's been hovering around that top 10 mar, uh, spot most of the evening, but looks like he's not going to get the result he was hoping for here tonight. Uh, engine damage tends to be the most terminal kind of damage, so I don't think he'll uh, be getting back up the pace anytime soon. He will be likely finishing ahead of the eight of Seth Hatchell, who's off the track 13 laps down. Um, with that being said, outside the top 20 most likely will be the finishing result there for the 43 tonight. So some struggles early for the guy that started outside the pole. He was the first car to pull it behind the pit wall. Not exactly sure what happened to Seth Hatchell, but I know that he was off the pace there as the, ran, the run continued. And 43 a Shoemaker, the next one, electing to DNF here today on lap number 89. Riding with Ben Baffert, the top three. Second position up for grabs as the 66 comes off a of turn four, looks to the inside of McWhorter. They have a couple other drivers behind them, so they probably want to make quick work of this if they don't want Joshua Banks getting back up to their bumper. Yeah, the sooner they can finish this battle, the uh, the more likely the 35 won't join in to make it a three-car battle here for uh, third, or sorry, second. It looks like Bafford will clear the 73. He will roll that inside line to great effect. Take away that second position. Now he's got his eyes set to try and track down the 48 of Jeff Wright. I think Bafford was uh, out a little bit later than the 48, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, I don't looks think like that makes a huge difference. About the same time, okay. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a matter here of just who's done a better job saving their stuff through this point. Uh, between those two. McWhorter came down about seven laps before both of these guys, so while he's running pretty well at the moment, those older tires starting to show a little bit as he falls another position back to third. And pretty soon they'll have to have uh, the 35 of Joshua Banks. Too. Well, we're past the halfway point. Alex, I don't know how familiar you, familiar you are with the sponsorship here at Saturday Night Racing League, but this is a perfectly good time for everyone that has a volume button or a remote control, watching it on your smart device, on your TV, to turn it up and get loud here tonight, Saturday Night Racing League, sponsored 29 Graphics. Let's get loud here on V-Speed. Jeff Wright continuing to lead here. That was Get Loud presented by 29 Graphics, but here on V-Speed, it's been rare lately for a lot of these leagues, especially here at SNR, to see a guy dominate the way that Jeff Wright did at the beginning of the season. It really kind of goes back to these guys preparing for what, you know, they know how Jeff handles these races. I think tonight, he's just caught them all off guard. Yeah, the 48's got something dialed in that I don't think the rest of the field's really brought to the table here tonight. He was just absolutely clear in house. 
on the lap 100 here. Next time by, it'll be 80 laps to go. Jeff Wright, of those 100 laps, I'm pretty sure he's led about 85 of them. I mean, he's just been killing it. Yep, yeah, it'll be 85 on the dot. Wright's just been absolutely cruising here tonight. He really hasn't been challenged all that much either. It's not like he's like been in first, but like barely. I mean, he had a bit of presence from McWhorter in the early going, but once he pulled away from the 73 there before the, uh, the green white, uh, the green flag pit cycle, I mean, he's just been cruising. It looks like the 73 brings it back down pit road here. Early second pit cycle potentially between him and the 11 to Lucas Lyons. Um, it wasn't all too long ago, though, that we saw guys like the 24 of Bailey Turner come down pit road. So strategy's really starting to mold together here. Yeah, this is weird. I mean, if, if you set this up in your mind, 60 laps, I think, was what the 40 or the 24 and the 71 had made this run on the stint. And these guys are only 40 laps into this. I believe McWhorter only had like 45. So there's... There's quite the difference here on how long they stretched it, and this sets them up for a third pit stop because they physically cannot make it on fuel. I, I guess they're just looking at it as they'll make more time up on consistently fresher tires versus the uh, bouncing it out with the extra time down pit road. But, you know, whenever the strategy game devolves from just when you pit to how many times you pit, that's where things start getting really goofy on track. Because now when those guys re-merge back on uh, track here, they're going to be on brand new tires, the 11 uh, and the 73. And there'll be cars who have been on these tires for about 50 laps or so and won't be planning on pitting for at least another 10 to 15. So you're going to feel like Superman for a couple minutes here, absolutely flying past people. Um, then, you know, about 20 laps from now, they'll all come down pit road. You're going to feel like you just put a cinder block in the back of the car. Well, and I think McWhorter already kind of got a taste of that. He wasn't able to lead that lap in the 48 of Jeff Wright. He is just in another time zone compared to the first guy that came down pit road in the 73 machine. Going to do it again. Down to the inside now of Max Cost. He's got a long ways to go to unlap himself. We're talking about almost a full 30 seconds to catch back up to the 48. But as, as this all sits and works itself out, we try to keep up with these strategies and what guys might be thinking. I think right now, in my mindset, hitting that early, I think Jeff Wright just ran away with this race. Potentially. I mean, there's still a lot of time left. You know, anything could happen. Should there be a caution, you know? Baffert's been running, running about the same lap times as Jeff Wright ever since he got around... Uh, uh, the 73 for second place about 10 laps ago. He's been running within about a tenth of a second each lap. If they had the restart side by side, could be a very different story. Uh, but if this stays green, I mean, it's hard to imagine someone's going to close up over four seconds uh, to the 48 machine just with the way he's been running so far under this uh, green flag run that has lasted all 108 laps so far. So right now, as things hold, Jeff Wright definitely looks like he's going to be an unbeatable force out there. But, you know, a yellow can strike from anywhere, especially at a track that's less than a mile long. Uh, and if that's the case, then it really would throw uh, this whole race on its head with how many different strategies that are currently going on on track. So it goes with Jeff Wright, Ben Baffer, Joshua Banks, Bailey Turner, and Alex Bell in the top five. Chad Klinger, Ray Massey, Chuck Sweeting, Noah Mahalski, and Ryan Rose for the top ten. Shout out to the YouTube chat, everybody that made it out here today to watch this broadcast. We appreciate you. Statistically, though, 32% of you are not subscribed to the channel that view this, and... It helps us out tremendously if you do hit that button. I hate to be that guy or say those things. You know how, I guess, repetitive that can sound every single week. But, you know, we we strive to bring you the best coverage we can here on V-Speed of every single league that we present. And we have a little bit of everything from trucks to Xfinity cars, even the BMW Car Club of America on Thursday nights from time to time. You'll never miss a single race if you turn on those notifications. Brandon Wallace out there. We have Vandal Vod as well. Bring it in, in the chat. A little quiet here tonight. I'd like to see you guys get, get alive. At least harass each other in there. If not us, we tend to make mistakes. <laughs> Plenty of opportunities to do that. 
Looks zero, like three, the Mahalski. 3 here of Mahalski coming down pit road. So this pit cycle, I think, is really starting to, uh, I guess, get under effect for the second time here. We see more and more cars. Here comes the 89 as well. Um, the, the, this second pit cycle, though, I feel like has been far more spread out than the opening one as these strategies start to build on the uh, what they did in the opening stop. So guys like Bailey Turner, we might not see come down pit road for another 20 laps or so. Uh, but for some of these cars like the quarter or, um, you know, uh, the 11 of Lucas Lyons, they've already been on track after their second stop for like five, ten laps now. It's going yep. gonna to start getting really goofy on track, I think. A lot of different strategies, a lot of different speeds all on display. And, you know, Bailey Turner did a great job working his way back into the top five here. Uh, but once he got about six and a half seconds back of Jeff Wright and into the top five, those fresher tires that he's on compared to the rest of the field kind of just stalled out. So I don't know if he overcooked it trying to make up all that time or just the tires plateaued with him about six seconds back of where he wants to be. Well, I'm sizing this up again. I'll go back through it. The numbers for the 73 and the 11, they're going to have to pit again. And I'm fairly certain that this top five, if they stay out another 10 laps, they're going to make it to the end of this race, guaranteed. Uh, it's going to be about a 55 lap or 65 lap stint it's it i think it's very doable um i just i don't know i don't know how this strategy plans out i'd like to think that these guys know more about their situation than i do but watching it from up top here i don't think it's going to work out at all for mcwarder or lucas Lyons. yeah i think it's a tough spot to be in i think they uh they committed to the early stop trying to get the undercut trying to get those points uh, and then when that didn't quite shape up the way they wanted to, it was too late to try and re-stretch out that middle stint, I think. So they're just going to try and really commit to the uh, the short pit strategy uh, each time and see if that can make up enough time on consistently fresher tires. But tough break potentially for the 73 and the 11, who had top five speed to start the race. Pit strategy here might put them in a very different position. You can see McWhorter right now 12th and not on the lead lap. Same deal with Lyons. He's back in 15th, not on the lead lap. They are obviously faster than those lead cars at the moment, but certainly not uh, going to be able to make up that ground anytime soon with just a sheer amount of distance they still have to cover. Speaking of distance, the gap to the leader has grown to a full four seconds. Bafford has lost, and I mean, he's... Worked a lot of traffic here. Jeff Wright's had a lot cleaner track. It seemed like Baffert's just been stuck behind somebody since he came back out. And that'll go right up again there with the 73 of the quarter, who's on fresher tires. He'll pull away from the 66. Um, but yeah, no, to your point, Baffert just had to consistently fight through a lot of traffic. What I've been surprised about, though, is that he hasn't fallen back to the 35 of Banks. That gap has remained kind of consistent as here he comes down pit road now. Bafford making his way down pit road for what should be potentially the final time here if this stays green. And that was one hell of an entry to pit road. I mean, he locked it down. Very close call for the 66, but he's able to get it woed up just enough. I believe he's going to be clean and he'll be able to get off pit road without a penalty. Jeff Wright. Following suit, he comes down pit road. Going to be interesting to see how much the 48 lost time-wise on that entry because it was about four seconds exactly when they came in. We'll see what that 66 is cooked up. Bailey Turner's still out on the racetrack. He'll take over the lead. He's going to get some more laps led. Again, he's stretching it out. I'd venture to say probably an additional seven or eight laps. He'll stay out here. Do you think he pits a little sooner this time, Alex? I think he's going to have to just through the nature of he lost a lot of time in those last couple laps when he was out there on the really old tires. Uh, and I think he was trying to give himself the optimal window of the most options possible on that first stop. When you stretch it that long, it gives you a little more creativity of when you can pit that second time around. Uh, but this time, knowing that you have that fixed point at the end, you're going to try and balance it out so you get a couple more laps here to give yourself that tire advantage that'll last most of the final stint. Uh, but you can't let them get like a ton of laps on you on those older tires because then you won't be able to make that up even after you stop. So I think we'll see him probably run about another five laps maybe at most. But I would imagine he brings it down pit road sooner rather than later to have that tire advantage without losing a ton of time on track. 
Alex Bell will work up into the top three for the first time today in the 15 car. Just about four seconds away from the lead. He has the potential to get a lap led here today. He has the 44 of Philip Brewer on much fresher tires. Almost a moment there coming out of turn two. Bell got really loose in the 44. Heads up move there to avoid that. But as this run stretches on through, we got a few more takers down pit road. 75 making his way out. Ryan Rose also leaving pit road. And just a few more cars left. You got Bailey Turner in the 24. Alex Bell, Ryan Carwile have yet to hit the pit stops. Joseph McWhorter, of course, hit the pit road very early. He has worked his way up to third position. However, Jeff Wright is the next car to get around him. You saw Jeff Wright just out the corner of the frame of Bailey Turner trying to unlap himself. McWhorter is only maybe seven, eight seconds ahead. Tight moment there, Jeff Grant trying to get under Caleb Weekly as uh, Turner was going high. The 13 kind of ran out of space, uh, but they'll all kind of get it settled down here. Right back on the lead lap. You see about a four second gap between him and McWhorter, uh, about three and a half actually. Bailey Turner though, still in the lead here, pushing lap 127. It has been a green flag run from the start of this race till now. Two cycles of green flag pit stops have basically been completed once these last couple cars down come down pit road. Only real lead changes have been when the green flag pit cycle has been going on. The 48's been dominant whenever everyone's been on track at the same time. Uh, but right now, Bailey Turner, the uh, the optimal benefactor of these alternate strategies here, he's led the second most laps tonight uh, by nature of just extending these runs significantly longer than the 48 has. Well, I tell you, watching these guys out here in this long green flag run, it makes me really wish that I was part of this race because <laughs> this is where a lot of drivers that are good at saving their stuff, I, I'm not saying that I'm the best at it, but I do like to save my tires and being able to run a green flag run and not have to change your strategy six, seven, eight, nine times in a row and just focus on this is the next car I need to pass. This is when I need to pit. This is how fast I can drive this car, hit my marks, get that tunnel vision, get zoned in. That's essentially what we have going on right now across the entire track. I, I just want to be out here, Alex, so bad. It just the itch is, it's unreal. You know, if you really hurry up and get to your car, you might be able to get on track for the last 45 laps here. As it yeah, looks like Bailey Turner going to bring it down pit road here. Oh, on lap there 30. He's going to slide it big time. I think he got it down to speed, but he might have lost a second or two trying to catch that car on pit lane. That's going to cost him a little bit of time, probably a couple seconds on the racetrack, that little moment. He almost did that on his first pit stop, and I was wondering, we haven't really seen anybody do that. And if we were going to see anybody just have a career-ending drive into the pit wall that this is the place to do it as the 48 gets around the 73 right not as the leaders come down pit road again he's I'm not, not gonna sure let him lead 73 the 73 got credited with the lap i think it was still the, uh, the 24 so once again the 73 one lap short to getting that first lap led of the night Again, yeah, that's got to be really frustrating if you're Joseph McWhorter right now. Yeah, I mean, you're waiting on everybody to hit pit road so you can get one lead, and they do it as Jeff Wright passes you two times in a row. Now it's the situation of Jeff Wright pulling away, and you're on older tires. You're just trying to hold on to a top three. And the 73 to your uh, to the point you mentioned earlier, not sure if he's going to have the fuel to make it all the way. I don't think he will. So at what point do you have to bite the bullet and get that third and final pit stop done? Um, you obviously want to extend it a little bit in case there's a caution so you don't put yourself in a bad spot. But the way they've been running so far tonight, I'm not sure if there's going to be a yellow flag flying here tonight. You might just have to get down there sooner rather than later so you have the most time to work on those fresh tires. You see the 24 flying past some of the traffic on older tires there. 15 seconds separate Bailey Turner. About five positions. You've got Ray Massey, Joshua Banks, Ben Bafford, Joseph McWhorter. Now bear in mind, all of these drivers have about an additional 12 laps. Actually, McWhorter, he's over 20 or 30 laps on older tires. Bafford probably going to catch McWhorter. I'd say Bailey Turner, by the time he cycles up to these boys, will probably catch 
Ray Massey and then Joseph McWhorter have probably fallen back enough. I, I don't know if he'll be the next car after that. It's about to get really dicey from second back to sixth. That it is. It'll be a good test for those cars in the uh, the top five to see how well they can not only work through traffic but get around each other because they are going to meet each other at some point here. You see Baffert only about four car lengths off the back bumper of McWhorter right now and that's going to drastically come down through the center of the corner. Baffert's probably going to be able to make the pass here going into three and four. Already peaks to the inside into three. Down to the bottom of the racetrack. Doesn't have to lift nearly as long. 73 trying to use the outside line to get a little more steer in that car. He will match the speed on the exit. You can see here off the back bumper of Baffert. He did get a run. However, it's just not going to be anything he can do something with because the entry speed of that 66 so much faster. And this is where being on 15 lap older tires and the rest of the top five is really going to come into play if you're in the quarter. You just kind of have to buckle up and hope that you can maintain some semblance of pace, but it's going to be easier said than done as everyone's going to be flying by you on fresher tires. Not an enviable place to be right now if you're the 73. Is now Banks going to look to the outside here coming off of turn two. And just not enough run there for the 73 car. The old tire's not working out and will lose another position back to fourth. Bailey Turner, the next car in line. He got around Ray Massey and it kind of fell exactly the way I thought. McWhorter will be the next car if Turner can catch up to him for the fourth spot. But we're running low on time. Turner has a shot at a podium, but I don't think he has a shot at the win here. It's just too much of a gap. The quarter's 14. down pick road again. There it is. The three-stop strategy tonight for the 73. Going to put him in a, a massive hole that he's going to try and work his way out of here in the closing 40 laps. Not an enviable place to be in, though. They'll have the freshest tires on track, but I, I'm but not gonna thinking the 73 too. is going to... Yeah, I, was say, I don't think the 73 is just going to have the time that he needs to undo a lot of the damage here from the three-stop strategy. And speaking of another driver that's on that same strategy of the 11 of Lucas Lyons, he's back in the ninth position. He'll probably be the next car to have to bring it down pit road because he's already 40 laps on this stint and we still have 40 to go. Not going to be possible here as we ride on board. He is on the clutch. He's trying to stretch it out in the hopes that, that there's a caution. I think he can clutch it all he wants. It's just not going to happen. He's also about to lose the lead lap here in a second. That's Jeff Grant in his mirror, or sorry, Jeff Wright in his mirror, uh, who's uh, closing in by the second. Jeff Grant, huh? Who's that? Uh, fun that fact, it's a ge AI generated name in a fantasy hockey league that I participated in recently. He <laughs> was one of my That's fake defensemen. Uh, not even whatever reason, I thought Jeff no, nope, not even racing, which is a real, real tragedy. But Jeff Wright's going to clear Lions here with uh, relative ease. Uh, the 48's dominant night will, uh, will continue. Well, I don't know much about hockey, but I do know that this racetrack can get like a hockey rink at times. You saw the pit road entries for some of these guys here tonight. Bailey Turner, who lost all that time, I think he would probably be pushing Joshua Banks already had he not made that mistake on pit road and. You're seeing him back here just outside the top three. He's got another nine seconds to catch up. However, 10 lap pressure tires, plenty of time to do it. He just needs things to fall his way. This race needs to stay green and Turner can absolutely catch up to these guys. Yeah, he's closed off three seconds in the past 10 laps. If he was able to maintain that pace, he would get into that podium mix in about 20 laps or so. Uh, given that we've got 35 left in this race about he would have the time to get there if he maintains this pace, but how much will he be able to do so while also trying to push that car uh, to its limits here, knowing this is the final run? You gotta be careful not to burn up your stuff, but also with time running out, you can't afford just to sit back and hope the race comes to you when you've got a five second gap up to third. 19 laps led for the 24 machine. He's the second most laps led, and the guy that probably wanted a lap led came back down pit road. That was the 73 of Joseph McWhorter. He needed one today to try to help that points gap. But Jeff Wright, who has the points lead, eight points coming into today, he's going to capitalize on all of that because he has a pretty big jump. 
back to the guys that are in the top three in points. They're not having a great day. Well, especially not compared to Wright, who's done about everything he can to just escalate that points lead as much as possible. Hasn't stepped a foot wrong. Won the pole, has led almost every lap here tonight, uh, and is poised to try and pick up win number five of the season if he can hold on here in the closing 33 laps. I mean, it's just been a dominant drive so far from the 48 as you see some lap traffic trying to get around him here on the outside. The 50 of Lakeos trying to clear himself. But going to have to battle a little bit here with the 48. Could be an opportunity potentially for Baffert to close up a little bit of time when he's still about three and a half seconds back as it uh, looks like Banks may be coming down pit road here. Oh. Oh, contact with the 44. Oh, the front end is gone off of Josh Banks' car. And he is continuing to push the 44 down pit road. He is not happy with the 44 Brewer at all. Caution flag does not fly. We remain green with 31 laps to go, but one of the podium contenders has fallen out of it. Oh, man. Oh, and it takes out the 71 of Carwile as well. Heavy damage there for Banks. Looked like he was just so much faster than Brewer going through the corner. Tried pushing him a little bit on corner exit. 44 got loose, collected the 35, and then this beef went all the way around three and four and down pit road. Can't imagine the crews of either car gonna be very happy after that one, trying to repair all that damage. Well, let's back this up a little bit more and see if we can unpack what happened why the 35 was so upset. I mean, he ran up on Brewer. I don't, I, mean, I don't know if you can really put that on the 44. I mean, he's driving his line. I can see the frustration. He's probably not happy about it. On one hand, you could look at it as like, oh, got taken out by lap traffic here when I'm fighting for a podium spot. On the other hand, that situation I think was pretty avoidable. Um, just kind of drove into him and then got collected as the 44 lost it trying to catch himself on corner exit. Crazy sequence of events, but I think that's going to uh, let the 24 of Bailey Turner uh, at least inherit a potential podium finish here as they run. He's still eight seconds back of Jeff Wright, about five seconds back of Baffert, but the 24 on that uh, very different strategy from most of the field might be able to at least bring home a podium finish for his efforts if he can hold on to third. This is one of those moments where you know that Iowa is the short track. When things like that happen <laughs> and the tempers flare up, you only see that at a short track. You don't see that at Daytona. No, you really don't. And it's been interesting because this race had been run pretty clean for the most part. There have been a little bit of bumping and banging in the opening 20 laps off the start. But then the field got so spread out because of this long green flag run, we hadn't seen a whole lot of it. But apparently it was brewing just beneath the surface there, and we saw it unfold in full display with the, uh, the 35 and the 44 just a few laps ago. But uh, 25 laps in this uh, left in this one. And uh, I think... Jeff Wright, he might just be able to cruise his way to the uh, to victory lane here if this holds. Lucas Lyons trying to make a pass on Ryan Rose, and there's about a 20 lap difference on tires here. Lyons has been out there for 55 laps compared to the 78 with just 32, and it's a really a wonder that Lyons is even <laughs> attempting a pass with that much of a difference. It just shows how fast this 11 car has been all day. Unfortunately, off sequence, the same as the 73 McWhorter, who's a lap down right now. The 11 has stretched it out as far as he can. He's still not on a good stint, though, because he's lost the lap to Jeff Wright regardless. And for every lap he stays out here, it's just going to get worse. Yeah, and unlike the 73, the 11 has not come down pit road yet. So you see McWhorter is about to make a pass here for ninth. The difference between the two is McWhorter's tires are only about 18 laps old compared to the Lions as being about 56. So the 73 going to breeze by with relative yep. ease. He'll take away that ninth position. Um, and the 11 situation does not get any better here because the guy he was on cycle with 
just passed him with 30 lap pressure tires. Yeah, and that means when he comes down pit road, he only has about 20 laps left in this race to even have the attempt to go back and get him. Did he save enough? I doubt it. It didn't sound like he was clutching anymore. We ride back on board with him. He's kind of given up on the fuel saving at this point. Did he save enough? I don't know, but I would lean more towards probably not. It would be a superhuman effort if he did, knowing that they came down pit road shortly after lap 100. And um, with the fuel window, to my knowledge at least, not being anywhere close to 75 laps, uh, I think he's just going to be trying to stretch until the very end of that fuel stint uh, before he comes down pit road, just hoping something happens. As we jump back to the battle for fourth here, Alex Bell, Ray Massey, um, right, uh, about a car length apart, battling for fourth here. Yeah, just a few tenths separate these two. We saw it heating up a little bit more as the laps progress. The 23 really strong through one and two. And if my timing and scoring is correct, Massey has the pace that he can get around the 15. It's just a matter of every time he gets in that dirty air, he can't complete it. A little bit quicker last time by, and this time around, he's just about even because he's gotten to that dirty air. The one thing that will work in the 23's favor is there are cars all over the track right now. No one's super bunched up, so might be a lot of opportunities for the 15 to have to try and traverse lap traffic, and the 23 could use that as a potential pick opportunity to try and close that gap a little bit. You see it's kind of holding steady at about two, three car lengths here off the nose of the 23 for this onboard shot. So less than 20 laps to go. Jeff Wright has a sizable lead of three and a half seconds coming out of turn four to cross the strike for lap 163, 164 now. As Ben Baffert trying to chase him down, he has dwindled this lead away a little bit. Remember, it was over four seconds after they cycled all these pit stops. Three and a half. He's done a good job trying to maintain pace with Jeff Wright, but we're only talking about maybe six hundredths of a second here, six hundredths of a second there. That's not going to cut it. He needs six tenths of a second if he wants a chance. Yeah, and that's why I was saying a little bit earlier, I was going to be super intrigued if we did get a caution. The six or the 14, 66 uh, on the screen here, uh, 14 on the timing table. He's been running about the same lap times as the 48 most of the day whenever they both had clean air. Problem is, he just had to fight through some traffic early on, and that gap's been about steady ever since lap 20. Uh, but if there was a late race restart, I'd be curious to see how they fare when they have that gap diminished because they've been running similar lap times, but may not be something that we get to see come to fruition here as we've got about 15 laps to go and uh, we have not had a caution through the opening 166 laps jeff wright in control about three seconds over baffert and you know bailey you turner's cut word, the uh the deficit. Uh, maybe we've got uh bailey turner's cut about four and a half seconds off that deficit from when he's come down pit road but just too little too late for the 24. Four full seconds back from Ben Baffert, seven and a half from your leader. And you keep saying that yellow word, and I think commentator's curse is going to take over. We almost saw it on the back stretch just a moment ago with the 35 and the 44 of Philip Brewer. Unfortunately, the 71 of Ryan Carwile got involved in that. And uh, actually, that put Bryce Shoemaker back out on the racetrack. He decided, hey, I'll come back in. These guys, I have a chance. And maybe uh, gain it. No, I don't think you do, Bryce. Unfortunately, you're 79 <laughs> laps down. 79 laps down, and he's still got about 55 laps that he would need to clear to pass Brewer. Uh, and given that there's less than 15 to go here from Iowa Speedway tonight, mathematically, I think he's locked in the 21st. Yeah, that's unfortunate, though. I mean, you had very early wrecks for a couple of these guys, and Bryce was one of those cars that kind of spun by himself and didn't have enough on the racing surface to bring out the yellow. However, if you're the 48, the 14, the 24, anybody really in this top five, you're thankful that the yellow hasn't came out because you have committed to a strategy here and you have to perform. Your car has to run exactly to that T. You, you're not saving right now the way that you would if there was a yellow, you'd be pushing it a little bit different. It's just a, a whole different ball game if we get a yellow at 10 to go and hopefully for Jeff Wright's sake, for this phenomenal drive, he stretches the lead back out to four seconds. For his sake, I hope it doesn't happen. 
Yeah, 100 percent. He has been by far the uh, the dominant car here today. And if there was a late race restart, might undo uh, about 150 laps of really, really solid work from the 48 today. Um, the one thing that I find really interesting is that for about the opening 40 laps of a stint, uh, Baffert and Wright run near identical times, but this is, seems to be where the 48 is really able to stamp his uh, his uh, his real racing craft on the rest of the field here. He seems to pull away from Baffert just a little bit once they get to that about 30 lap mark. It's going to happen a couple of these stints. So even though Baffert's got some pretty clean track in front of him right now, just going to be uh, too little too late for the 14. You see the uh, 73 of McWhorter was also just behind Baffert. Uh, he's got himself back up to eighth. Uh, but he is the first car a lap down, and uh, he may, if he's very lucky, have time to reach Jeff Wright. Um, but he's probably going to be locked into that eighth spot either way. Never say never. When you give these guys a chance, we could re-rack them. Anything can happen here. We still have plenty of racing left to do. Just over eight miles left in this thing. And I, I tell you what, though, Jeff Wright, just a, a clinic of, of a drive, and... I know we've just talked about how how great that is, but how about Baffert, Turner, all these guys that tried to sort out the, that strategy. She actually saw the 66 really tight there off of two. But these guys are hanging pace. They're trying to do something different. And, and really, if you're a little off on speed, you have to try something. You can't just go out there and do the exact same thing the leader does. It's not going to work. Yeah, and they've, uh, they've all taken a shot at it, and... You know, it'll get them good finishes, maybe just not the win here tonight. We still have a pretty good battle going on for fourth there. Uh, Bell and Massey continue to be running within a couple car lengths of each other back there uh, in fourth place. So still some action on track in the top five. Some points still to be decided here in the closing laps. Mark Brick shot 23, trying to get around the Napa Supra. Bell has really turned up the heat here at the end of the season as well. Had a great start and then kind of disappeared but really dormant oh they're both loose coming off before this is gonna be a good race here with five to go no doubt about that battle for fourth is on alex bell has it ray, uh, ray massey wants to take it away got to the inside there off of two he's gonna have a nose to the inside and three and four almost gonna lean on each other but they're gonna stay separate here running about a lane apart the 23 gonna slide back up behind the 15 was able to get alongside, just couldn't get the full run he needed off of four. He is going to have to try the outside, and Bell is not going to let him have that. He's just not going to let him get to that bottom or get to that outside. You can see him running a higher line playing defense. I think if you're the 23, you're going to have to take your racecraft and morals and put them aside here. If you really want that position, there's only one way to get it. Yeah, with uh, three laps to go, now might not be the time, but with one lap to go... Might be a little bit of a different tune as the 23 looks to the outside of the 15 there on one and two. Didn't have the run, but was able to get some clean air on the car. Gonna pull right up toward the 15 here going into three. Not gonna try and make a move that time by as the 15 washes up the track maybe a little bit. Now the 23 gonna try and dig into three and four. Gonna tr close that gap. Almost has a corner to the inside, but not quite. But he's gonna lunge it in here to one and two with two to go. Gonna be door to door. Jeff Wright's gonna come around this time by for the white flag up in the air. Jeff Wright just has to get around one more time here at Iowa with a dominant performance. He's led over 150 laps here today. Jeff Wright off of turn four for the final time. He's gonna be your winner five times now in Saturday Night Racing League. Jeff Wright at Iowa. 155 laps led for the 48 tonight. Dominating performance as uh, Ray Massey will take one more look to the inside here of Bell coming through three and four. Not going to be able to get it done, though. The 15 going to bet. Oh, he's got really loose. He's going to be able to hold on to fourth, but I almost got really dicey for the 15. Is there are cars wrecking across the, <laughs> the, wreck, uh, the, the, the track now? Everyone's decided, all right, ran clean for 180 laps, time the Bennett.
post-race interviews with your top three. We're going to unpack some things that happened during this race. You're watching the Saturday Night Racing League live on V-Speed. Our coverage continues right after this. Drivers, start your printers. To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today or call us at 276 276- 889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk in and Roll in Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together, to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk and Roll in Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Tractor USA, the best way to buy and sell premium ag and construction equipment. Tractor USA was designed to be straightforward, simple, and affordable with zero commission and live auctions every week. Tractor USA auctions offer the finest selection of pre-owned tractors, combines, and other ag and construction equipment from across the United States and the world. Simply go to TractorUSA.com to get started today. Back here live from Iowa, the Saturday Night Racing League has concluded its 180 laps here today for what is, I mean, a dominant performance. Your race winner of the day, Jeff Wright, just a phenomenal drive. Ben Baffert's going to come home in second position about four seconds back. You have Bailey Turner in third, Alex Bell in fourth, and Ray Massey. Tight battle between the 15 and the 23. He's going to get a top five. Chuck Sweeting, some of the worst luck this season, finally puts it all together and gets him a good solid finish. Sixth position for the 75. Noah Mahalski is going to come home in seventh. Joseph McWhorter with the early pitch strategy. We talked about that during the during the break and trying to figure it all out. Well, it just didn't size up, and he's going to come home eighth, one lap down. Now you have Ryan Rose in the ninth position. Ryan Carwile, who was involved in that incident, will take you back and look at that in just a moment. He'll round out the top 10. Back in 11th, you've got Chad Klinger in the 09. 12th, Lucas Lyons in the 11. Stefan Davis will bring it home 13th tonight in that number 66 machine. Austin Bulky, 14th there with the 50 of Casey Lucados in 15th. Caleb Weekly is 16th, Gary Berger on 17th, with Mike Cost in, or Max Cost in 18th, Joshua Banks and uh, Philip Brewer both involved in that late race incident that did not bring out a caution, but that will end up tanking both of their days to finish 19th and 20th respectively. A shoemaker and Seth Hatchell, some of the cars first to elect to bring it behind the pit wall. Let's uh, get it up on your screen here. So we got it. We got a little bit to unpack here. Let's first go back to this margin. This is a, a little crash here between the 11 of Lucas Lyons. Here's the 43 of Bryce Shoemaker. Actually, back that up a little bit again here. There's the first problem that we had here today. And so that pops the engine on the 43 car. And now let's take you to this because this. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the start of it, but that's certainly not the end of it here between these two. Yeah, Brewer got his car back running, but kept it down low on the racetrack. And 
the 35 said, well, if my day is done, yours is going to be done too. And then they both and bring it down pit road and they, they both have a couple of choice words for each other, uh, both, I'm sure, verbally and also with the actions of the way they came down pit road. So a wreck that started in turn two didn't finish till the, uh, the entrance of pit road. But ultimately, that's, uh, you know, all through the end of it, you, you got to think, well, a lot of tempers and stress and all these things that are going on. At the end of the day, uh, hopefully they they can put it behind them because you got you got a lot still here in the season, a lot left to race for. Speaking of racing for it, let's get you down track side now and catch up with Alex Gagnon. He's down on pit road with your third place finisher. That's Bailey Turner in the number 24. Hey, uh, Bailey, you got the, uh, the top three finish here tonight, uh, running a very different strategy than most of the field. You're trying to really extend it in those opening couple of stints. Talk to us a little bit about your night and the decision to try and go long the opening couple stops. Yeah. Um, Kind of got stuck there behind the uh, 71 and or 73. I can't remember whatever Joseph that first run. He kind of burnt his stuff off, and it's just so difficult to pass, especially in the long run. That you know, um, wanted to have some kind of advantage over those guys around me, and um, yeah, just was too far behind on that first run, and tried to go long just to see. You know, first off, you might get lucky and catch a caution with how pit cycles are here sometimes, and. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get any this race, um, but yeah, I I would say I kind of lucked into that P3 just with Banks wrecking and everything. It seemed like him and him and uh, Ben and I were just level off lap time wise and Jeff was just on a, in a league of his own, setting the pace out there on the long run. Even with 10 lap pressure tires, Jeff was matching my lap times towards the end of each run and um yeah, not much you can do at that point, but, you know, the eyes were set kind of on P2 or P3, kind of mid-race, and we accomplished that goal. But, um, yeah, let's uh, wish wish we didn't get stuck behind the, the slower car in the first run, and um, like I said, it's so difficult to pass. Um, wasn't able to do, do do a lot there. Yeah, it did seem like once the uh, the tires plateaued a little bit, it was a little tough to maneuver. You mentioned you were hoping potentially for a caution during some of these pit cycles as the entrance to pit road here is tricky. seemed like you yourself almost had a moment there on that second pit stop. Uh, <laughs> talk us through trying to get down pit road there, and if there was any concerns that you were about to, to loop it there trying to get down to 45 miles an hour. Yeah, it's a it's an awkward pit road entry here just because it's kind of in the you know the left side on the peripheral and you're trying to look for your mark and um, during these runs you you know these car this car was just so plowing tight that you had the uh, brake bias dialed back as much as you could to get it to rotate and uh, didn't uh, unfortunately forgot to adjust my brake bias right there before pit entry and I had a little too much rear brake dialed onto it but um, you know I knew I had it under control it's just you know with the lack of grip that far into the run just trying to hang on to it and uh luckily I don't think I cost myself too much time yeah ultimately you're still able to bring it home for the the podium finish you also got 19 laps led here tonight uh second most of uh anyone and by far the most of anyone not named um Jeff Wright tonight so do you look at that as a bit of a victory knowing that of the of the rest of the field you were able to run up front a good bit or do you just look at it as well? We had a uh, top five pace, finish top five, and you move on from there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm running a pretty limited schedule, but still trying to uh, make that late push to make the playoffs. I think I have like at least two or three races less than everybody in the top 12. So um, all those points matter and they kind of add up. And, you know, I want, like I said, trying to go with a little bit of different strategy, not to cost myself any points on the back end, but try to get, like you said, get that lap led and get a bonus point. So. Um, all those things kind of factor in and uh, hopefully to making a uh, late se season push here. Well, with that uh, third place finish, it'll certainly go a long way in trying to do so. Uh, before we let you go tonight here, anyone you'd like to thank or shout out? Yeah, uh, shout out the winner over there, Jeff Wright. Um, it was fun having uh, Lucas in our channel as well tonight. And uh, yeah, obviously you guys with the broadcast and all the sponsors that have come on board to kind of, uh, you know, support this league on Saturday nights. It's been, uh, it's been real fun and well appreciated. Alrighty. Well, that was uh, a good run for you there, Bailey. We hope to see you again here in the V-Speed booth really soon. Appreciate you guys. 
And that was Bailey Turner, your third place finisher here tonight. Pretty uh, pretty solid run for the driver of the 24. Tried a different strategy than the leader. Didn't get the win, but did get a handful of laps led and a pretty solid finish, the boot. Yeah, he really, he had to try something different. He even talked about how Jeff was saving tires a lot different, a lot better. And so the situation for him, he had to be in a different, uh, different strategy entirely because when it came to just straight up speed, there really wasn't anybody in this field that could match what that 48 car was doing. However, we do have a guy that matched him a lot of the run. That's your second place finisher, Ben Bafford in the number 66. He's got Alex Gagnon down there on pit road next to him. Yeah, Ben, second place finish here for you tonight. And uh, you were able to hold on to that spot most of the evening. You maintained pace with Jeff Wright a lot of the time. You just didn't seem to have that little extra bit you needed to try and close him down. Um, any thoughts on how your night went as a whole once you worked your way up in the P2 and then the strategy game from there? Uh, I think it went pretty good. Uh, I never could get the right front under me. So I, I was I was fairly tight the whole time. It was pretty hard to pass. So out of the first run, I just had to back off, save my right front, and eventually just push forward to have the momentum towards the end, towards the pit cycle. But other than that, I mean, pretty uneventful day. Uh, lap traffic was fairly easy. Jeff was just the class of the field. I, I did nowhere near him at the moment, but glad to be here. It was a great debut, and I'm sure as hell ready to race next week. Yeah, I mean, in the uh, debut, no less, it was a really, really strong run, qualified in that second row and never really looked back from beyond that. Uh, did you think at all about if there was going to be a caution, if there was going to be any semblance of you being able to race the 48 uh, on the restart there, if that gap were to be diminished or were you just thinking about the way you had to run these green flag stints, knowing of how green heavy it had been so far to that point? Uh, later into the run, I, I knew we were so spread out that another caution wasn't likely. I was just trying to hold off Banks, and something happened to him. I, I'm not totally sure, but uh, after that, I was kind of hoping there wasn't a yellow because I wasn't super good on the short run. I hadn't practiced too much. I wasn't very good at running the top, so I, I was pretty happy to see the run go long and just finish off the day with a good, strong, clean run. That it was. It was a really strong run. And you mentioned that today is uh, was your debut here with the Saturday Night Racing League. Uh, next week, you know, last race of the regular season before they hit the chase. Uh, too late for any sort of chase aspirations, but how do you feel next week knowing that uh, you came in here first try and brought it home on the podium? Uh, just hoping to do the same thing next week. Just consistently put up numbers, and hopefully next season, if I'm able to run full-time, I can be able to shout at the championship. Alrighty, well, a strong run for you here tonight. Anyone you'd like to thank or shout out before we let you go on your way there, Ben? Uh, just big thanks to the league for letting me in. Uh, glad to be here and glad to just form bonds with everybody. Have a great time. Alrighty, well, congrats on the P2 finish, and uh, we hope to see you again in the booth real soon. Thank you. That was the 14 or 66 of Ben Bafford, depending on uh, whether you look at the timing table or the car out on track. P2 in his Saturday Night Racing League debut, Bradley. Pretty uh, pretty solid run there for Ben Bafford. Yeah, he put it all together, and I'm familiar with the name. We've watched him a lot at BTDY and the stuff he's capable of. Watched him race a lot with Jeff Wright and Adam Cabot. So a guy that we are fully aware of here on V-Speed that we know is very capable of going up there and, and snagging a win, but in his debut race, it's going to be tough to beat uh, Jeff Wright his own, in his own game here. This is this is the league that Jeff put together on Saturdays. And, uh, yeah, it, it's good to see, though, that Ben made it his made his way over here in his debut, and hopefully he can uh, have a, a little bit more success as we're going to Atlanta Legacy next week. That brings us to victory lane, though, and the dominant performance that Jeff Wright just put on. I'm down here with Jeff Wright, victorious for 156 laps. You had everything going for you, man. The race stayed green. I know you love that when it happens. Then then you got all these guys trying these different strategies and kind of working against themselves. It just made the situation even worse. By the time they had it figured out and realized it was too late, you were four and a half seconds ahead. Yeah, you know, like you said, we we're happy to have this race go green. Um, I felt like, you know, we were going to be pretty confident if this thing was going to go a long run. And thankfully it did. And uh, we were able to grab the pole tonight. So um, didn't quite have the 
you know, the best uh, pace, I guess, in practice, but I, I was kind of surprised myself with what I was able to do in qualifying. So um, that really, you know, helps, especially, you know, at a track like Iowa where it could get really tough to pass. So um, you saw it get a little bit crazy there early, a lot of three wide, just everybody trying to get, you know, all they can. Um, and then that was able, you know, to allow me to get a little bit of a gap. Um, and then kind of once the tires settle in, uh, the dirty air kind of becomes an issue for the cars behind. So we didn't have to deal with that tonight again, which uh, definitely played a factor. So, but yeah, just uh, glad this thing stayed green because uh, uh, last year I felt like I was in a good spot to potentially get a win here at Iowa and some late race stuff happened and we weren't able to do it. So I feel like this is a little bit of redemption um, getting a win here at Iowa this season. Yeah. An untimely caution last season. I do recall that you had led a lot of that race as well and had the speed to, to put it in victory lane that time. But here for season number two, the second to last race. I uh, actually have a little shout out here for you. Lions Pride in the chat. I'll give you a guess of who that is. Says if he doesn't bring up his good luck charm, I'm a riot. So do uh, you have anything to elaborate on that? I don't think uh, luck is really where we would categorize this. This is 156 laps. It just looks like raw, raw skill here today. Yeah, I um, know exactly what you're talking about there with the Lucky Charm tonight. So uh, big shout out to Lucas Lyons. Um, not really my teammate, but he was in the teammate channel tonight because the rest of his teammates weren't here. So, uh, But he brought it up to me um, in the race before every single race he started this season uh, that I've won the race. So um, we were able to do it again. So I hope Lucas, I hope he's back. I hope he's here next week at Atlanta because um, we're going to need a little bit of luck at Atlanta. So we're going up against a lot of guys that are really good there. Um, I know Brian Chambliss is really good there. Ray Massey got the win there last season. Um, Michael Sturgill, um, you know, if he's going to be here next week, he's going to be a threat. He was leading late until Ray Massey had that final push and got the win. But, um, yeah, so I wouldn't be uh, too disappointed if we see more Lucas Lyons in here. So, um, And he's a good driver, too. I've seen him win on V-Speed as well. Uh, most recently, I think he won Pocono in the Xfinity car. So he's a good talent, and, uh, yeah, we're glad to have him here in this league. Well, there you go. Lions Pride, you don't have to ride now. He mentioned it, and he's asking for you to come back next week, so that's a good sign. Uh, Jeff, let, let's boil it all down. You, you had the, the poll. You put yourself into a situation where maybe you surprised yourself, but the clean air was tremendous. You drove away very early, a few tents. What were you thinking when those guys short-pitted at the start of this race? Yeah, you know, initial response, I thought when Joseph had brought it down pit lane about 10 laps early, um, I didn't really think that was going to work, um, you know, but, you know, we saw Bailey Turner try some wild strategy last week at Milwaukee, and he found himself in the lead, I think, three different times just solely based on strategy. So you always know that's a possibility, and that might have been what he was going for. Um, he was right there with me in the first run for probably, you know, the first 30, 40 laps, and then I could tell that he started to struggle a little bit, started to fall back. So. He probably just wanted to try something different. So, you know, can't blame him for that. Um, you know, like you said earlier, there was a strategy was really all over the place tonight. Some people going long, some people going short. And I kind of, you know, elected to just play it safe um, and kind of just split it up, you know, 60, 120. And then, you know, just having those 60 lap increments pretty much all race felt pretty comfortable with that. Um, the last pit stop, I forgot to turn off uh, auto fuel, which worried me a little bit. But uh, thankfully, car felt pretty stable still. So. Um, even despite not uh, filling the tank and having that car be a little bit looser, um, it all worked out in the end. But um, And then just, you know, awesome to have this go green flag the entire time. No cautions. That's a big, uh, you know, a big shout out to everybody involved in this league being able to go green for 180 laps tonight. That's always awesome when we can do that and a lot of fun. Yeah, and with the different speeds and the lap cars and all the different situations. I mean, we did have some things boil over. I'm sure you're going to go back and watch that here. On the broadcast, we definitely got to see some fireworks, even with the lack of yellows. And uh, in here tonight, it was it was more of a short track esque. And uh, I hope you get uh, a little enjoyment. But I know you got to do the admin duties. Jeff, is there anybody you'd like to shout out for tonight's victory? Yeah, first off, uh, big thanks to Al Gagnon coming on board here and broadcasting with you here on V Speed. So awesome to have him. Um, got to listen to a little bit just throughout the race, and it sounds like he does a great job. So you got a good partner in Alex uh, up there with you tonight. And then, you know, thankful, you know, for you as well, Bradley Cooper, for all you do for us in the league, having been a broadcasting partner for, you know, one and a half seasons now. Um, and, you know, hopefully that relationship continues. Um, big thanks to all sponsors. Make it happen. 29 Graphics, Tractor USA, Clark Print Shop, Walk and Rolling Costumes, 
uh, for all they do financially so that we can put these on and then, uh, you know, be able to afford a good broadcast team like V-Speed. Um, super fun to go back, watch all these races um, with a crew that's as good as you guys. Um, and then just thanks to the other league admins that help put this on, Chad Klinger, Bryce Shoemaker, Reggie Ortega, Brian Chambliss, uh, who hasn't been here a whole lot this season, but hopefully that schedule changes. Hopefully we can get him here. And like I said earlier, uh, I think Brian's going to be a threat at uh, Atlanta, so we better be watching out for that. Well, there you go. And the VSP odds will be posted according to that. Jeff Wright, congratulations. Five times now you've been to Victory Lane, and we have one race left in the regular season as we get set to go. So thank you for your time, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. That's your race winner, Jeff Wright, in the number 48 machine, your points leader, coming into tonight. And he's going to he's gonna lengthen that a little bit more here, Alex, as we go to our final race. Absolutely, yeah. He already had the lead coming into tonight. And, you know, when you have a dominant performance like you do tonight, there's nowhere to go but up. And a couple of the cars who were on his tail, most notably the 73 of uh, Joseph McWhorter, had an all right day, but not going to be nearly enough to match what the 48 put out tonight. So Jeff Wright's uh, lead in the points will continue to grow after Iowa. Well, that's all she wrote here from Iowa and Saturday Night Racing League. If you enjoyed tonight's broadcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a single race as we bring you flag to flag coverage all season long. We hope you can join us tomorrow night for the Sunoco Cup Series. That'll be going live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The Premier Series will be at Talladega for the fifth race of the season. And then we have more SNR next week, 10 p.m. as always. We've got Overtake iRacing League. You can hear familiar voices, Alex Gagnon on Tuesday nights. You'll have Morgan Cook producing on Mondays and then yours truly on the Wednesday nights. You've got guys on Thursday. We're doing a little bit of QSR. We're doing QSR on Tuesday. It's BTDY. We've got a lot of racing here on V-Speed, so make sure you tune in. But for everybody at V-Speed that made it possible, Adam Baker does all the stuff in the background. My co-commentator of the night, Alex Gagnon. And our other producers, Christian Hill, Eddie Smith, Morgan Cook. This is Bradley Cooper telling you to have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time here on V-Speed.